chapter 74. When the Omega Wolves tore Ops's heavy security door from its frame, Dr. Maya Brandis stood at the ready. She opened fire as it fell away and shot Billy in the face. He flew backward, howling outrage. He landed on the hallway floor. Nathan, Derek, and Michael scattered, screeching. Dr. Meyer Brandis scowled and shot Billy two more times. She aimed for his head, but only managed to clip his ear with the second shot. She hit him in the chest with the third. Billy quickly recovered. He rolled to his feet and crouched low, ready to strike. Dr. Meyer Brandis aimed at him. Dr. McAllister hid behind her, whimpering. That's right, Mama, Billy hissed, scraping his claws together. Shoot me! I intend to, Dr. Meyer Brandis replied. I should have put you out of my misery years ago. You should have, Billy cried, leaning toward her. You kept us locked up like animals. You are animals, she said, and squeezed the trigger. The 9 millimeter went off with a bang. The bullet crashed into Billy's optical implant. The force snapped his head back, and the lens shattered. Billy cupped his hands, caught some of the glass shards, and threw them at her. They bounced off her lab coat. Shoot me again, Billy yelled, and shoot me again, and keep shooting until you don't have any bullets left. He dug his foot claws into the floor tiles. When you're out of bullets, I'm going to cut your head off. What happened to the mama? Out mama? Billy go out? Crap, she taunted. Dr. McAllister moaned. You fool, Billy cried. You bought that? You're just lucky you didn't let me out. If I ever got away from the sedation system, you'd already be dead. Dr. Meyer Brandis smiled. Good thing I never did. Oh yes, Billy growled. It would have denied me the pleasure of doing this. He cried, now! Nathan dropped into the doorway, hanging upside down from the ceiling. His human eye socket was dark, empty, and filled with exposed circuitry. He snatched the pistol out of her hand and crushed it. Dr. Meyer Brandis backed away, grabbed Dr. Wang's chair, and held it up. Come on, then, she exclaimed, ready to belt the first Omega Wolf through the door. It would be her last mortal act but she wasn't going down without a fight. My pleasure, Billy replied, and leaped at her. Oliver and Corny collided with him in midair, ramming him into the wall. Kelly and Adam charged into Michael. Edison wrapped around Derek from behind and bit into his bicep. Derek roared, trying to throw Edison away, but the wolf boy held on, biting deeper. Nathan dropped to the floor and spun around into Jake's pistol. Jake pressed it against Nathan's optical sensor. Good night, sunshine, he said, and fired. The lens exploded. Nathan fell backward into ops, his arms thrashing up to his face. Jake jumped into the room, stood over him, aimed at the hole in his head, and fired three more times. The last shot entered Nathan's face and exited out of his empty eye socket with a loud pop. He convulsed spastically and died. Jake pointed the gun at Dr. Meyer Brandis. Don't move, he raged through his teeth. Dr. Meyer Brandis sat in the chair she held. She crossed her legs and arms. Wouldn't dream of it, she muttered. Dr. McAllister fell to his knees, clutching Jake's pant leg. Thank you. Thank you. Jake glared at him. In the hall, Corny dug his claws into Billy's shoulder as Oliver slashed down the center of his back. Billy howled, threw them off, and bounded down the hall toward Alpha Wing. Oliver sprang up and charged after him. He dug his claws in and ran sideways along the wall. Edison pulled Derek back with all of his weight and snapped his spine. Derek folded to the floor, staring at the ceiling. Edison sniffed him, growling, but he was dead. Corny was about to follow Oliver when Michael reared up, throwing the other wolf boys off him. Adam hit his head on the broken op's door with a whack, stunning him. Corny bared his fangs, said a prayer for Oliver, and then dove into Michael, 
Edison right behind him. Michael sank his claws into Corny's thigh, but it didn't stop him. Corny bit and slashed at him while Edison held him around the waist. Kelly dove through Michael's legs. He transformed to semi-wolf mode, stood up behind him, and wrapped his arms backward around his throat. He hunched forward, pulling Michael with him, throwing his weight toward the ground. Michael's neck snapped. It echoed through the hall. He went limp, sank to the floor, and landed with a dull thud. Kelly looked at him, his eyes filling with tears. I'm sorry, he cried. I wish I didn't. I mean, would you come on? Adam cried. At ease, Fields, Corny growled. Not everyone's a killer. Adam got into Corny's face, angry tears welling up in his eyes. He held his claws up at full extension. What do you think these make us, McCall? He cried, his voice cracking with emotion. Corny swallowed his anger, drew on his love for his pack brother, and slowly lowered Adam's claws. They make us a hundred times more likely to forget what it means to be human. Adam recoiled as if struck. His anger melted, and he turned to Kelly. I'm sorry, he said, lowering his eyes. Okay, I was wrong. Kelly nodded. It's okay, he sniffled. It's just going to take some time. That's all. Hey, Edison exclaimed. We better help Oliver. Where is Oliver? Jake called from Ops. He sounded worried. The greenhouse, Corny replied. Jake kept the pistol trained on Dr. Meyer Brandis, but backed into the hallway. Where's Granger? he asked, concerned. Adam's expression lit up. He sniffed the air, searching for Tom's scent. When he caught it, he took off down the hall toward Alpha Wing. The other boys followed, but only until they realized Adam's route led away from the greenhouse. Corny stopped them. Oliver first, he said, turning toward the access doors. Granger will have to wait. If he lives that long, Kelly said. A chill ran down Corny's spine. He led them into the greenhouse. Oliver circled Billy on the main lawn. He glanced back at Kelly, his eyes full of sympathy. He sensed the pain taking someone's life brought to his pack brother. It was dark, greasy, and unforgiving. Oliver thought, of all of us, Kelly was the least likely to ever kill anyone. How many times did we talk about how he dreaded having sanction authority once he became an agent? Even now, he's vowing it will never happen again. God, I know exactly how he feels. Adam was something else entirely. He blocked himself from the uplink, trying to hide his thoughts. Oliver knew them too well. He feared what Adam was about to become. He circled Billy, transmitting instructions to the others. He needed to end this if he was going to save Adam. The wolf boys understood. They switched to stealth hunt mode, their eyes turning dim white with standard tracking vision. Oliver distracted the remaining Omega Wolf. 30 seconds to 100% operating efficiency, Wolf Boy 1 said, into Oliver's mind. It's over, Oliver growled, ignoring his onboard unit as he mirrored Billy's movements. It's never over, Billy screamed, his claws scraping together. Look at me! Look what they did to me! And they'll pay for it, Oliver replied, switching to bioscan. Billy's systems were in upheaval. He needed to calm down. I promise. How? Billy raged. He tore up a large chunk of the lawn. He held his claws out and shook them at Oliver. How are they going to pay for this? How are they going to pay for the years I spent in a cage? That's for a judge to decide, Oliver said, trying to force a calm. We can't exact our own vengeance. It isn't right. Do you think I care about what's right? Billy cried. I've heard you, Oliver. I've heard you talk about how much you love this country. Look! He gestured down at his body. He pointed to his shattered eyepiece. Look what this country did to me! Look what they made me! No wonder, Oliver said with conviction, 
unique in ways the world has never seen before. Liar! Billy spat. He screamed up at the glass lattice. I'm a monster! No, you're not, Oliver replied, signaling the wolf boys through their intercom. It was almost time. I'm not going to let you become one either. Repairs complete, wolf boy one suddenly said. It added something that made Oliver's blood turn to ice. ACOM enabled. It happened so fast, Oliver didn't have time to react. Wolfboy 1 took control of his body as its automatic continued. It happened so fast, Oliver didn't have time to react. Wolfboy 1 took control of his body as its automatic continuous operations mode became active. Warning! Threat detected! Sanctioned with extreme prejudice! Huh? Corny asked, confused. Oliver opened his mouth to speak, but Wolfboy 1 shot toward Billy with blazing speed. It drew its claws back and repeatedly slashed, cutting Billy to the bone through his chest, arm, and thigh. Billy gasped and fell, his body jerking and twitching as he tried to crawl away. Oliver screamed, Stop! Please, God, stop! Wolfboy 1 froze. Onboard host wishes to override ACOM? Yes, damn it, Oliver cried. Override! Stand by. Confirmed. Partition directive no longer applies. Onboard host may override director's ACOM order. ACOM is disabled. Corny, Kelly, and Edison dove onto Billy and held him to the ground. He struggled, but they were too strong for him. He fell apart as they pinned him to the grass. He sobbed, Kill me. Just kill me. Corny leaned over and looked into his human eye. No, he said sternly, his brows furrowed. You're going to live to see them pay for what they did to you. Billy burst into loud, forceful sobs. The wolf boys let him go. He curled up into a fetal position and wept, his body shaking. His wounds slowly closed with help from his advanced immune system. It wasn't as fast as the wolf boys' nano repair system, but it was adequate. Oliver, visibly shaken, motioned for the others to come to him. Everyone shifted to human form. I love you, Oliver said, needing to say those words first. We love you too, Corny replied, emotion catching in his throat. Well, a voice echoed through the greenhouse. It was Jake. He jogged across the lawn. Isn't this just chummy? How come no one invited me? Jake, Oliver asked. Where are the good doctors? Jake winked ruffling Corny's hair. I strapped them to the tables in the operating room, or whatever you call it. I wanted to see how they liked it. He nodded at Billy. What about him? We're making him live, Corny replied. We need to get him to Gamma Wing, though. Oh, Jake replied, hoping he didn't have to touch him. Looking at Billy nearly made him wet his pants. Make Dr. Meyer Brandis help him, Oliver said moving toward the outer access door. I have to go. Wait, Jake cried. I'll come with. Kelly grabbed his arm, cutting him off in mid-sentence. He shook his head. Jake asked what? Where is he going? He's going after Adam, Corny said, as Oliver disappeared out the door. He's going to try and stop him. Stop him? Jake asked. From what? Edison whispered. I'm becoming a murderer.